All right, hello everybody. <coughs> so uh, I apologize for the substantial <laughs> uh, time that has lapsed between you know video uploads. Uh, I'm definitely very busy with all the instruments that I manage and whatnot, and uh, I definitely have lots of good ideas for video topics and whatnot and instrument tutorials. Um, <coughs> but um, I did have an idea for kind of a quick hitter video and I had some a free uh, a few free minutes here to record it um, and uh, post it and so I thought this might be useful and uh, this of course is you know a raw unedited uncut uncensored hopefully safe for work uh, but I wanted to do a short video here almost kind of like I'm gonna try not to say rant but um, but a video about getting the most out of your microscope training. So one of the things I do as part of my responsibilities is I train users to operate uh, our instruments. And so those instruments are uh, TEMs and dual beam fibs. And I also um, train people on an SEM, but the dual beam fibs and the TEMs are uh, my primary uh, responsibility. <coughs> So having done this now for about 10 years, um, I can kind of cover um, some of the common issues that I see with people getting trained and what you need to do or what you should avoid when you're doing the training and how to get the most out of your training. Okay, so um, without question, the biggest mistake I see when people get trained or they want training on, on, on an instrumentation is the timing of the training, <clears throat> okay? So if you're somebody who is very new to microscopy and, and most of the people I train, um, usually when they get on a microscope, it's the first time they've ever been on an electron microscope. So they're people who are literally going from, you know, zero to TEM, right? And so you have, you know, so many hours with them to get them up to speed and, you know, then you turn them loose and they're operating the tool on their own. Um, but the biggest problem I see with people when they want training is the timing of the training, okay? So, <clears throat> Those of you who remember what it was like when you first got on a dual beam fib or TEM, you probably remember how intimidating it was, how complicated it was, all the things you needed to remember, right? I mean, these are, these are definitely not uh, easy instruments to use and operate, okay? Um, there, there's a lot of intricacies and a lot of steps and whatnot, and you know, a lot of button, buttons to push and things like that, okay? And it's just, you know, pretty complicated to do. Okay, and so the most important thing to get the most out of your training is the timing. And when I say timing, I mean it has to be done in such a way that as soon as you are done with the training, and I understand that you know training is not universal, right? Some places do training differently than other places, some places you know train for longer than others, obviously, but the <clears throat> The training has to be timed in such a way that when you are done with the training, you are immediately ready to get on the microscope and use it. And this is by far the biggest problem that I see with people getting trained, is they get trained on the machines and then they end up waiting months sometimes, um, at, at worst, right? I've had people who have gotten trained and literally have gone a year between when they've done the training and when they've actually used the microscope, okay? And that's obviously extreme, but even if you wait, say, like a few weeks, okay, that's a long time to wait if you're somebody who has very little experience operating an instrument. Now, if you're somebody with a lot of experience, okay, this is not really so much of an issue, but if you're somebody who's just new to operating uh, one of these instruments, okay, you have to get on the tools as soon as you are done with the training and you have to use that training immediately 
or you're going to forget everything. You will forget everything, and then all the training that you had will basically sort of expire, okay? And you'll be back to square one. You'll get there on the machine. You'll say, wow, I forgot everything, right? I don't know what to do, okay? I need, you know, I need to be retrained, or I need, you know, a lot of support while I'm operating the tool, okay? And obviously, we'll, we want to avoid this, right? We want to avoid this for, you know, the sake of the person who's training you, right? But also for your sake as well, okay? And so this is the, the, the big challenge that I find is that far too many people, and it's not just the people, it's also the advisors of the students, okay? Because I, I do work at a university. They think that training is something that can be kind of bottled up and put on a shelf. And then, you know, at some later date, you can just dust it off and it's still going to be fresh and it's still going to you know, look shiny, and it's still going to taste good, and it's still going to be effective, and it just doesn't work like that, okay? Training is not like wine, right, that you can bottle up, and then years later, you can open up the wine, and the wine still tastes good. Training is a lot like milk, okay? And if any of you have ever opened a bottle of milk, you know that once you open that bottle, you don't really have a lot of time before the milk starts to taste bad, okay, right? You can't drink milk a month after you've opened the bottle, okay? Milk's not going to be good at that point. Certainly not going to be good, you know, six months after you open it. I mean, even after a week, right, you know, milk starts to kind of taste a little fishy, okay? So training is the same way. You have to wait until you are ready to get on the machines, as soon as you are done with the training. You have stuff ready to go, you have samples ready to look at, you're ready to get on there and get to work, okay? If you do that, no matter what kind of training you have, okay, how long it is, how short it is, you are going to get the most out of it. But that is what you have to do, is you have to be ready to apply it immediately after you are done receiving the training, okay? So, that being said, there's one other thing I want to mention. A lot of the time, um, because there's obviously a lot of you know overlap with the usage, but um, if you are also somebody, so if you're somebody who's going to use a dual beam fib as well as a TEM, okay, is there an order to doing the trainings on those that's better? And the answer is yes. Okay, you would want to get training on the dual beam fib first. Before the, before the TEM training. And the reason for that is that once you complete the dual beam training, you then have an ability to create specimens, okay? And then you will have specimens that you can then look at when you finish your TEM training and you can get right to work, okay? So if that's another issue, if it's not just I'm getting trained on one microscope, I'm getting trained on you know the dual beam fib as well as the TEM, get the dual beam fib training first, okay? Then you can get to work on making your samples. Again, right, wait until you have samples to make and to work on. And then once you're done with that, right, you go to the TEM, and then as soon as you're done with the TEM training, you have the means to make specimens, okay, or you have specimens ready to go and everything is fresh, okay? And again, this is how you get the most out of your training and this is how you properly, um, what's the word? Properly arrange the order of your trainings um, to get the most out of them. So uh, that's the short video for today. Um, oh, and by the way, um, I'm actually not looking at it right now. I'm just looking at the voice recorder app, but this image that you are seeing, this is an, an image taken on our themis of silicon oriented along the 112 zone axis where you can clearly resolve the 78 picometer dumbbell spacing. And so, yes, eventually I will put up a tutorial video on using the themis. Um, definitely one of those ones in the works, and I definitely you know want to show it off to everybody. So, But uh, that's what this image is. So hope you enjoy that. And... Um, uh, there'll be more of that to follow. So you have any comments on training? You have any training stories? Any advice um, that you'd like to share? I'd be you know, more than interested to hear it. I'm always learning new things about you know, how to train people effectively. Um, so feel free to leave a comment. And uh, with that, uh, hope to see you guys again soon.